Are you tired of the same old kick drum sound here in GarageBand? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of small tweaks that are gonna make your kick drums sound oh so much more epic. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. Now, a big shout out to my friend Gary Hubs. He put me onto this tip and it is super cool. It's a very simple way to EQ your kick drum to be able to give it a whole bunch more punch in your songs, especially in rock songs here in GarageBand. So the tip is super simple and it involves our EQ because your standard kick drum is good for some types of music, but if you've got especially a rock song and you want it to really kick through, you want to hear that thump in the low end and you want to hear a little bit of treble in the chop end. So that's what this EQ tip is all about. So if we go to our kick drum and we come into our plugins and EQ, I'm going to show you the settings that work beautifully here to give your kick drum that punch that it really needs. Needs. Now, if you're not sure how to separate out your drums into separate tracks, check out the video linked up there and down in the description. That will show you how, but assuming that you've changed your original drums into individual tracks like this, and you've got your kick drum track ready to go, let's dive in and take a look how we can manipulate this to make it really pop. So we're going to jump into plugins and EQ by tapping on our mixer icon there, plugins and EQ. Now I've got some compression on here, not a whole lot. So here's our original kick drum. I'm just gonna add the compressor. It just gives it a little bit more volume. You don't even really need to change that. You can probably just turn up the volume. In fact, I'll turn up the volume of this kick drum just so that you can hear what this is doing in the mix. The next thing that we're going to do though is what is the secret source of this method, which is our EQ. So we're going to turn on the visual EQ. And if I jump into my EQ settings, this is the secret source. The magic here is we've got a boost here at around 100 hertz. And you can see there we've got it pretty hefty, like 9.5 dBs of gain. You can see there as we move it up and down, up in the top left in the orange, we got up there 9.5 dBs of gain, around 100 hertz. So this is going to give the thump of the kick drum. And then because we want to hear that click of the kick drum, that beta hitting sound, we've got a, a, a boost here up about 10 dB up around that mid range, around 2,900 in this case. So you can move that around anywhere between 3 and 4K. And then we've got also a boost here in the treble end. You can see there, we've got a boost up there at 7,300 hertz. Now, this will vary. You can experiment with this. But what I'm going to do is if we turn this off, this is the kick drum sound that we're getting here, right? Let's take a listen. So that's pretty good because I've turned the volume up, but it's not really cutting through, right? Let's turn on this visual EQ. What are we going to get now? Well, it sounds like this. Can you hear that hitting you in the chest? So the two things we've done here, this one is that chest hit. So if we bring these down and we just play this, this is that chest hit you're getting from that low end. And that's cool, yeah, but as soon as you spring up this treble as well, you get a bit of this action going on and you get that, that real clicky sound. And you want a little bit of click in your kick if you're using it for a rock song. Let's take a listen. And of course, you can go nuts with this. You can drive it up here and you'll get something like this. So for certain types of super hard rock or metal, maybe you want to like really boost it up there. But let's just sort of bring it back to around about the level that we want there, somewhere around about there. And if we bring this back into our mix, we'll drop the volume down there. Let's bring this into our mix. Just listen to how this kick drum really cuts through this mix. Let's compare this to without that visual EQ move. It sounds like this. It's not that it sounds bad, but it's not cutting through. It's not giving us that low end that we need for a hard rock song. So if we bring it back in, it sounds like this. Fear of change. Right? How cool is that? Again, shout out to Gary Hubs. He was the one who put me onto this. Now, I've used these sort of methods before, and I've tried to do more fancy things using other EQs and other effects. 
but it is really as simple as this, of boosting your low end and then of giving yourself some boosts up here. Now experiment with how much you want to boost, at what frequencies, it'll depend on the rest of your mix. There is no one way to do this, but this is a cool method if you've got a rock song or a song that really needs some punchy kick drums to cut through your mix. I hope you found this useful. There's more videos linked down below and in the next one, I'll be coming back and showing you a trick for getting a really cool snare sound here in GarageBand. You don't want to miss that one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.